Keep the headset on. <laughs> and it gives me a minute. Thanks, Kay. Way to be a team player. So good morning again. I got to take a big old chug of my coffee. Because y'all know I mostly run on caffeine, sometimes chocolate, but whatever. So welcome again to Thrive NCC. If this is your first time watching us, your first time joining us, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, quick things I want to make sure I mention. Thank you to everyone who participated in food distribution yesterday. I don't know how many families you all serve, but still thank you so much for your service. Thank you, Travis, Marcy, and whoever else was there. Um, I also want to mention that we're still looking for ideas for social things in the, in the future. So it's looking like we're going to prefer things that are outdoors. So if you think of something, let us know. I know it's hot in Florida right now, but outdoors is still looking like it might be our best option. So if you have any ideas, please be sure to get with me or a member of the board. So anybody ever feel like what else can happen? What else can go wrong? Like you look at you look at life and you go, now what? Mm. Like what's next? I heard somebody say it feels like life keeps throwing me lemons, and I thought to myself, no, I feel like it's hand grenades, because <laughs> it's just been that kind of a thing. Yeah. It's like every time I think I've got my head wrapped around something, boom, there's a new thing. So today that's what we're going to talk about. But before we get started, let's pray. Holy, I thank you for this day and I thank you for these people. The ones that are here in this room and the ones that are going to watch on Facebook or YouTube at a later date. I thank you that as all of these songs spoke to, no matter what we're going through, you're still there. We still have you and you are faithful. So as we face this day and this week and everything that comes next, be with us, help us, guide us. In your many names we pray. Amen. Amen. So everybody knows the story of Ruth and Naomi, right? We've talked about it before. We've discussed Ruth and Naomi before. But I want to go back to Naomi. This is in the book of Ruth. Naomi and her family lived in Judea. But a famine hit. So Naomi, hubby, and the two sons pack up and they leave. And they go to Moab. And they're living in Moab, and it doesn't tell us how much time goes by, but Naomi's husband dies. Naomi and the boys stay on. The boys take wives. Life is still continuing. But then 10 years go by from the father's death, and the boys die. Both of the sons die. Naomi has reached the end. She doesn't know how she can go on. She looks at the daughter-in-laws and she says, go back to your people. Because I'm done. I'm going back to my people. And the one daughter-in-law said, okay, bye. <laughs> and the other one, Ruth, said, no, where you go, I go. We go in together. So they travel back to Bethlehem. Ruth meets Boaz. We ain't going to get into all that. They get married. They have a baby, a son, but everybody in Bethlehem sees Naomi because Naomi takes the kid and is basically raising the kid. Everybody in Bethlehem says of Naomi, Naomi has a son. Anybody know the son's name? Nope, Obed. Obed, the father of Jesse, who was the father of David. And if you grew up in the South or in any very strict Christian church, you know that that matters. The whole line of the fathers matters. Because when you get to the book of Matthew, who do we link Jesse and David directly to? Jesus. So Naomi moved because a bad thing happened. The bad thing was the famine. The famine happened. Naomi and the family moved. Then the bad thing happened. Hubby died. But Naomi and the sons kept living. They kept going. And then the sons took wives. And life continued. And then the next bad thing happened. The sons died. And what did Naomi do? I said, I'm out. I'm going back home. Going to Bethlehem. And Naomi changed her name. 
See, Naomi meant something like peace. I don't even remember what it meant, but it was something good. But she chose the name Mara for herself after her son's died because it meant bitter. Naomi knew that her heart had turned bitter. So she didn't want to be called Naomi anymore. She wanted to be called Mara. Bitter. My point is, in every situation, every time a bad thing happened, what did Naomi do? She did something. She moved. She grieved. The last time we could say she might have even done it in a bad way because she realized she went bitter. But I don't think that was bad. You got to go through what you got to go through sometimes. Mm -hmm. All the feelings matter. But Naomi did press on. And then in the end, Naomi was Naomi again. Naomi found joy again. Naomi was happy again. What would have happened if Naomi had stayed bitter and did not give herself an option to become happy again? Naomi pressed on. Much like the writer of Philippians 3.14. Philippians 3.14 says, I press on. I don't think about what's behind me. I don't think about what's in front of me. I just press on. Because sometimes pressing on is all we can do. The bad stuff happens and all we can do is keep putting one foot in front of the next and keep going. But how? St. Francis of Assisi said this. Start by doing what's necessary. Then do what's possible. And before you know it, you'll be doing impossible things. But step one is necessary. So when the famine hit, what was necessary? Find food. So we're going to move to where they got food. When the hubby died, what was necessary? Well, I'm going to grieve, but me and my boys are going to go on. And then when the boys died, what was necessary? Well, that was a hand grenade. It wasn't a lemon. It was a hand grenade. And so Naomi, in her head, what's necessary is now I'm done with this place. This place has brought me nothing but trouble. I'm going back to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So all of you, I assume, have faced things. Maybe you're facing things now. Some of you are. I know. Do you feel like it's a lemon being thrown at you? Or do you feel like it's a hand grenade? Hand grenade. Hand grenade, okay. And so what do you do when that happens? Now what? What's next? Where do I go from here? How do I even do the necessary thing? So, step one. Remember, this too shall pass. Amen. Things won't be this way forever. The famine didn't last forever. It passed. Grief lasts however long grief lasts. And I don't even know that we can say it passes completely. Because I still have moments when I still grieve. My granddad. But it does change. It morphs. And it's not as bad as it was in the beginning. I'm functioning. Mm -hmm. I can get up and go to work. I can have a life. I can see the good. Remember, this too shall pass. Second thing that's important when you face the hand grenades or the lemons or whatever is to remind yourself that there are still some things going right. <laughs> yeah, you've got this that has happened. A bad situation ha might have occurred, but there are still good things in your world. Mm -hmm. There are still good things in your life. There are still good things happening. So find them. Focus on them. Think of the positive. Think of the good. We had this practice on the way to church this morning. Sherry decided to say something about somebody. I can't talk about it because we're filming. I'll just say I'm related to him. <laughs> and, 
And so we're driving and she says what she says and she's not wrong. But I smile and go, okay, tell me three good things. Let's name three good things about this person. And so we named three good things. Sherry does this exercise with me last night too because I needed help. I was like Naomi. It wasn't a hand grenade that was thrown at me. It was a lemon. And the lemon got thrown at me and ooh, I was getting bitter. I was getting fed up. I was getting ready to say some mean things. And so I went to Sherry and I said, quick, help me. Tell me three things that are good. And so she did. And then she went further. She named the three, but then she kept naming. And as she named things, I was like, okay, we're good. I'm good. Thank you. So it helps to find the good and the positive things that are still happening and focus on it. Acknowledge it. Remind yourself. Not everything that happens is a lemon. Not everything that happens is a hand grenade. Even though in the moment, it might feel that everything that happens is a hand grenade or a landmine. But not everything is. The number three. Remember that you do have some control. We tend to get in the situations where everything's going crazy and we, we get helpless. We think, I can't do this. I have This is just happening to me. I'm a victim. There's nothing I can do. But the reality is we always have some small amount of control. Because when you can control nothing else around you, you can control you. You can control your reaction to the lemon or the hand grenade or the landmine or the nuclear bomb, whatever fits your situation. You can control your reaction. You can control your attitude. This is where Naomi goofed. Naomi turned bitter. But did she goof? I don't know because I think Naomi knew. And I think she just had to feel it. She had to go through it. Everybody she loved had died. But you still have some control. Even when it seems you have absolutely none. You can control your reaction. You can control your attitude. This one is difficult for many of us. You can control the words that come out of your mouth. I don't know why y'all looking at me the way y'all looking at me. <laughs> Number four. Remember you can ask for help. So I'm going to be real. This is something I suck at. I am not good at asking for help. Me telling Sherry, please name three things quick. That was big, was it not? It was a big deal, right, Sherry? Thank you. I don't ask for help. I just push forward. I just go. And when I just go without asking for help, I'll be honest with you, I can make a bigger mess than the hand grenade made. Because then I'm just a bull in a china shop and I'm like throwing dishes everywhere. True. It's okay to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. And this is a lesson that I have to learn. And many of you in the room have to learn too. Maybe some of you watching at home. The other important thing when you ask for help, be specific. Like, if you just text me and say, I need you, I'm going to text you back and go, Marcy, why? <laughs> what? I don't get it. Why you need me? Be specific. What do you need? What is it you need from me? Christy, I need you to come over and just listen. That I can do. Christy, I need you to rob a bank. No, girl, you built your own hand grenade. I ain't participating. <laughs> But be specific because that's okay too. It's okay to say, this is what I need most. It's okay to say, I don't understand what's happening. I don't know why this is happening. And I'm leaning very close to saying it's all my fault, but really, is it? There are some things that we can say we helped contribute to, but not everything is your fault. Things happen. Some things you can't predict. One such thing, COVID. It wasn't on my to-do list. Was it on your to-do list? Okay. So not everything is your fault. And you need to remember that. Number five, put it in 
perspective. Like big picture. This moment in time, this lemon, this hand grenade, this landmine, this nuclear bomb. How much of your life is this? The truth is, it's a small percentage of your entire existence. This thing that you're going through right now is this big. But you're living it and you're in the moment and so it feels like it's this big. But when you look at the totality of your existence, you add up all your days on the planet, you look at your entire life, this is a blip. Put it in perspective. Your life doesn't end in this moment either. Naomi might have felt like life was going to end when her boys died and she decided to move back to Bethlehem. But it didn't. She went on to raise another son. Not really her son, but she helped raise him. And it brought her joy again. Joy comes back. This is momentary. Number six, and this one, this one, people don't like to hear this one. You can handle this. And do you know how I know you can handle this? You've already handled other things. You've already went through other things. If I sat here right now and went around the room and said, name a lemon, name a hand grenade. Every person in this room could tell me something that they've lived through. One of you have a really big thing you lived through. I'm looking at you, okay? So if you can handle all of that, and you're here now, and you found joy again after that big thing that happened to you, you can handle this thing. It doesn't matter if it's a lemon, a hand grenade, a landmine, or a nuclear bomb. You can handle this. You can get through this. There is hope. There is hope. And it doesn't matter if you feel mad, sad, disappointed, broken. You will still come through this. You can come through this. Because you've already come through so much. Speaking of being broken and feeling broken, Elizabeth Lesser said this When you feel yourself breaking down, may you break open instead. And that made me think of the alabaster box. In Mark chapter 14, verses 3 through 9, it discusses the anointing of Jesus by an unnamed woman. And she comes into this house and she has an alabaster box. Some say box, some say vial, some say jar, just depends. Point being, it's very valuable. Inside this box is perfume. Oil. That smells really, really good. But when the perfumes and the oils would be put in these alabaster containers, what they would have to do is then seal them with wax so that the perfume couldn't escape. It could stay pure. So when I tell you that this woman came bringing her treasure, she was bringing her treasure. Because breaking the seal meant that it all had to be poured out. It all had to be given. There was no resealing it. You might feel that you're broken. But maybe what's happening is your perfume being poured out into the lives around you. How does it rain? The clouds break open. And the rain falls and the rain does what? Waters the earth. So then the grass grows, the flowers grow, the tree grows. 
the water sources get water added to them. So what if when you feel you're broken, what if what's really happening is your perfume is leaking out? What, what happens if what it really is, is in this moment, all the perfume stored inside of you, all the treasure inside of you, all the goodness inside of you, all the hope inside of you, all the faith inside of you, comes seeping out and leaking onto all the people who need it. What if that's what it really is? You're not broke down. You're broke open. And open brings good things, not bad things. So whether you're facing a lemon, a hand grenade, a landmine, a nuclear bomb, or even if life is just pretty chill right now and you're feeling pretty good about it. When the troubles do come, remember this too shall pass. And remember that some things are good. Some things are going right. Remember you can ask for help, not just from one another. You can yell, God, I need you. Holy, show up and show out. Whatever your language is, for holy, you can use it to ask for help. And you can handle this. It may not feel like it, but you can handle this. Because as the song said, the same holy that got you through before, is with you right now to get you through now. And will be with you tomorrow to get you through tomorrow. And will be with you the next day to get you through the next day. Because what do I keep telling you about holy? Ever present, ever faithful, working in you, through you, around you, if you let it be. And all the people said, Amen. Amen.